Yes, I'm perfectly serious. Fusion powered, while not really viable or easy to achieve yet on this planet, a huge fusion reaction passes over this good earth every day. Tons of free energy there for the taking. Today, in the Young Hang Hot Rod Shop, we are going to look at one way to design in part one and build in part two a field portable solar charging solution to power a GX CS2 12 volt DC compressor. Before we get to that, I'd like to announce a new way to support the channel. You can always visit targetforge.net. We love helping you get the most enjoyment out of your trigger time. We are also excited to announce we are adding Patreon to the mix. This allows me to provide you content just like this. You can find the link in the description below. Even a few dollars a month helps to keep the machine moving forward. For those in the know, we also do Amazon affiliate linking as well. You'll find links below to many of the items featured on this channel. Know that I will only feature items I actually use and believe have value for you and me. I wouldn't have it any other way. Using my links does not cost you one penny more, but Amazon gives us a small commission on the sale. A true win-win. Don't forget to subscribe and pound that like button. Welcome to the Young Hang Hot Rod Shop. Let's get to it. My background is primarily electric aircraft and land vehicles, specifically product test and design evaluation. I am not a solar design expert. Lucky for you, this monkey can be trained. And this learning process has been really fun. I give all credit for the equations to a fellow YouTuber, Oliver J. I'll put a link to his channel up here and down in the comments. The reason I decided to break this into two parts was so that I could share with you what went into this design and why I made the choices I did. None of this is written in stone, and the system I will lay out for you is expandable and quite flexible as well. If you want to get straight to the build, part two is what you're after. Let's look at this in detail. Why use solar? The efficiency is terrible. Two big points I'd like to make here. Number one, the best gas engines are only 30% efficient. The rest is waste heat. Yes, a good solar panel is between 20 and 30% efficient, but once you own this system, it's free. I'll say it again, it's free. It's also really portable. Yes, I'm in California, and despite being infested with manic liberals, it's uniquely suited for solar, both permanent and portable. My friends with less bright sunny days and lower sun peak hours can still benefit as the system will just need possibly more panels or maybe less fills per day. What are the components of a portable solar solution? In this image, we'll see solar panels, a charge controller, a battery, and an inverter. For this effort, we can ditch the inverter as everything I plan to run is on 12 volts DC. I don't really need 115 volts AC in the field. The effort of designing a solar solution is meant to create a system that will work well for you in your environment with what you intend to run and how much you intend to run that equipment. The steps for design are as follows. Load analysis. What power do you actually need and how often? Sizing of the solar panels. Your load proportioned to the available solar energy. Sizing of the battery or batteries. How much storage capacity do you really need? Sizing of the solar charge controller. 
a little room for future proofing here is okay. For me, I started with the GXCS2 compressor as the only load on the system. The GXCS2 draws 250 watts and I designed for 10 fills a day. To put this in perspective for anyone with a really efficient gun like my FX Crown Mark II in 177, I get around 130 shots per pill. So with 10 fills, that will get me 1300 shots per day. I don't think I've ever air gunned that hard. But I might invite a friend, so some margin is nice. That works out to 250 watts for six minutes times 10 per day. The math works out really easy here, yielding 250 watt hours. Here is a look at my Google Sheet, available to anyone who visits my site and contacts me for it. You can adapt the system to your needs easily, but I will caution that getting carried away may yield the system that is no longer easily portable. Next, we need to figure out how much panel we really need. And this is where the system can become unique to you and your environment. Use the power of Google to find the sun peak hours for your location. Understand that this will be a range of numbers as the angle of the sun varies seasonally, unless you live on the equator. If you're in Northern Michigan, you are probably not going to be shooting and filling a lot in the midwinter. So pick a number that matches best when you will use the system in your environment. This is where the real power of Oliver J's equations come to bear. Those specs you see on products are at best, best case, and are typically really optimistic. Oliver deals with that in the math and factors it such that you will get a system that performs as designed in the real world. From this, you might be thinking, that is not a lot of power. Why are you using 200 watts of panel? I wanted the ability to lean on the system for backup when our utilities get cut during fire season. It happens a lot. Would be nice to keep stuff charged and not need to listen to a generator all day long. This also makes it really clear how efficient these little red compressors actually are. When I started looking at this, I gravitated to those cool looking fold out panels from brands like Blue Eddy and other weird Asian brand names. Initially, they looked really compact, easy to haul. They are. But in every long-term review I looked at, the fabric-based units just do not hold up to regular exposure to the sun. My gosh, isn't that what they're designed for? The plastic over the cells often deteriorates. The stitching and fabric literally rots away. When I saw that, I was cured. I wanted quality PV cells, low iron tempered glass, and extruded aluminum frames. I'll give up ease of transport and storage for better durability and wind resistance. If you don't think you'll actually need to use the system regularly, a fabric-based decision may be okay for you. But why build the thing in the first place? You know when it will fail, right? Exactly when you need it most. I was originally going with Renogy panels, but then I learned the HQST panels are exactly the same. Literally the same panels of the same tooling and they are cheaper. Initially, I reached out to Renogy to see if they wanted to support this channel. And I got a Utah no. A Utah no sounds just like crickets chirping at night. No answer, just static. Some of their stuff is really nice. Oh well, HQST for the win. Next up is the battery we need. Never base your design on using the full capacity of the battery. Again, Oliver saves us here. He introduces an element called depth of discharge, or DOD. Most storage batteries do not like to be discharged all the way down. 
and they also really don't appreciate trying to force current into them when fully charged. But a good value for DOD is typically 50%. I use lithium iron phosphate chemistry on all my stuff. It's lighter, better energy density, and much better in a portable solution. Small portable systems are a great choice for 12 volt batteries. Here is Oliver's formula. Here's how that formula applies to our use case. For the purpose of this video, I will use the 25 amp hour battery from the ATV quad project, but I do intend to purchase a 50 amp hour unit in the future. I need some Patreon supporters first. Lastly, on our quest for a field portable, fusion powered PCP fill station, we need a charge controller. There are two basic types you will see in this space, PWM and MPPT. PWM is often cheaper, but at the cost of efficiency and performance. MPPT are much better at controlling the parameters of the charging process. And to me, they are well worth the extra investment. I know it's $30 versus $90, but I want as little wasted free energy as I can get. Oliver's math gets a bit deep here, as he brings a formula capable of dealing with the potential for larger panel arrays with multiple series and parallel elements. We only have two panels, so I simplified this here. Also, on the topic of how to connect those two panels, hooking them in series and getting a higher effective voltage actually helps us out. It helps with transmission cables. It helps with the controller. It's literally the way to connect two small panels together. Series is gonna be a better choice for this controller. With the charge controller I specified, I can go up to four panels if I want, 400 watts, but it's also perfectly happy with two. Yes, I'm trying to future-proof this a bit, but that's how I roll. That unit is the Renogy Rover 20 amp, 12 volt, 24 volt, auto DC input, MPPT, solar charge controller. It's a mouthful. I've got everything ordered up on Amazon and on in the affiliate links below. And in part two, we will construct this design and build it. Thanks for joining me today. I really appreciate your time and support. Be sure to check out the Amazon links if you are considering building one yourself. Please consider visiting my company's website at targetforge.net and our new Patreon to support this channel directly. I would love to keep bringing you innovative content on all things airgun related. Be a light in the darkness, friends. Peace.